Hello, everybody. And as I always like to say, welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis. I'm the host of Radio Entrepreneurs. And that's my part-time job because full-time I'm CEO of Mage LLC, a management consulting firm in uh, the Boston area. Our next guest I'm looking forward to speaking with, Jeff Weninger, founder and CEO of Law Enforcement Consultants. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. You know, a lot of people like to uh, talk, especially during election years, they like to talk about their definition of the law. And I'm interested in yours since that's what you do for a living. <laughs> definition <laughs> of law. But in the end of the day, it's about keeping the peace. So everybody, regardless of uh, socioeconomic status or neighborhood you live in, uh, can live a peaceful life um, and not live in fear and be able to work, play and uh socialize comfortably wherever they may be. Well, that's a very positive uh, attitude. I assume that's the mission. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tell us about law enforcement consultants, what you do and how long you've done it and why. Well, I just recently retired from the LAPD in January of this year. And I started law enforcement consultants for a number of reasons. I do expert testimony and primarily use of force cases in civil and criminal cases. But more importantly, I consult law enforcement agencies to try to help bridge the gap between some of the systemic issues and problems that we're having and coming closer to meeting societal expectations relative to policies, procedures, training, and the police culture. And who are your clients? Well, law enforcement agencies, municipalities, uh, attorneys, at, uh, school districts um, have all kinds of uh, anybody that is looking to address critical incidents and being able to manage them and minimize liability and in increase the likelihood of a positive outcome. We can work with you. Uh, is the we you or is there a team of people right now? Oh, I have a team of, of people. I have, I have attorneys on board. I have other uh, retired law enforcement officers and uh, that have the same level of expertise that I do. So it's, it's a team. And is there a geographic region that you prefer to work in or is it all across the country? It's nationwide. I actually have people all over the country from California to Florida and everywhere in between. Interesting. Uh, and where do you see this business going? Well, I see it continuing to grow. And uh, I see that law enforcement is actually in a crossroads. And there needs to be some actionable solutions to some of the challenges that law enforcement is facing today in order to be successful moving forward in the 21st century. And the way things have been going in law enforcement relative to the insular nature and culture of it, there, you, there needs to be a third party entity that has the level of expertise and the vision that my company brings to the table in the consultation of how to address some of these systemic issues. Uh, can we dive a little bit deeper into what you're saying, the systemic issues, what they may be, so that people understand if they are, you know, a target for your assistance? One of the most critical issues that you see is that upwards of 36% of officer-involved shootings involve somebody who's experiencing a mental health crisis. Mm. And law enforcement, it's societal expectations is that law enforcement better address these, these scenarios. And for instance, I came from the LAPD. The LAPD arguably is in the forefront of the training of its personnel to better handle these types of scenarios where you have somebody that's experiencing uh, a, a mental health crisis and dealing with it through de-escalation rather than using force to resolve the situation. However, that being said, from a statistical standpoint, LAPD officer involved shooting still have one third of them be of people of mental health crisis. So the, the issue is not always training. I've always said that 
culture trumps training. You have to I agree. Have, <laughs> have to have consistency with your training, your policies and procedures, and the actual culture of your organization. And that's where we need to bridge the gap. And I'm just trying to understand again, I'm not the expert you are, but if it's mental health is at uh, the root of a lot of this, how do we get to a systemic cure to trying to eliminate that part of it? Because I would assume, you know, mental health issues develop over a longer period of time. You don't spot it right away. And maybe by the time you can spot it, if people are public about it, social media, it may almost be too late. So it's, it, you know, it's a, to me, it sounds like it's a tough battle you're fighting. Oh, it is. It's absolutely, it's, it's a multifaceted uh, problem. It's, it's not just law enforcement. Unfortunately, law enforcement is the entity that has to address and deal with this when all other means have failed. So it's a sociological issue that needs to be addressed from a multifaceted solution. However, law enforcement, when dealing with these particular individuals, it requires that you have a more open and objective frame of mind. It's not about bad things happen to people that make mad, bad decisions. Officers need to be more self-aware of how just their mere presence in sheer numbers and the the being armed with lethal weapons and less lethal weapons like beanbag shotguns or foam uh, guns and things of that nature, how that can escalate a, a scenario. And that we traditionally would handle a, a situation with those tools, but we need to modify how we address dealing with people experiencing a mental health crisis when we when consider how they will be responding and how that potentially could escalate the situation. I mean, if you think about it, if someone were pointing a, a taser at you and you had a, a red dot on your on your, your chest, that's going to cause you some some angst. Now, raise that up a hundredfold because you're experiencing a mental health crisis. So law enforcement can't always rely on a traditional methods of, of addressing these these situations. We need to think outside the box and be open to diversity of thought and bringing in a multitude of ideas. I've always said this, it's not about being right, it's about getting it right. And that means you have to bring as many people as you can to the table with various ideas, rather than having an insular culture where you say, we know what we're doing, don't tell us how to do this, we're the experts. We need to have a, a broader open mind to to how we address these issues. Do you feel sometimes like a salmon swimming upstream? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. T truth be told, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing today is because I felt like a salmon swimming upstream throughout my entire career. I experienced this inflexible, resistant culture in law enforcement when it came to addressing some of these issues. I actually understand. Uh, sometimes I feel I'm dealing with entrepreneurship, competency, and literacy. Uh, chicken or egg? Did you always have the seed of entrepreneurship in you, or did the situation create you? Absolutely, the situation created me. You know, you think you have to have a little bit of context and understanding um, of my personal background to really understand why I'm moving in the direction I'm moving now in retirement. And I was, I was born to a teenage mother and I was lived in a foster home for a short period of time before I was adopted. I was adopted by wonderful parents. My father was a sociologist at Kent State University here in Ohio. And my mother was a chemist, but she decided to forego her career because they wanted four children. And they had their daughter, my oldest sister, and then they adopted me. They adopted my brother who's Japanese. And then I had a foster sister who is black. And I grew up in the sixties and seventies in Kent, Ohio. So I have a very different lens in which I look at the world through because of my experiences. And then I have my, my professional experience that has developed what I now am 
pushing as far as the solutions, actionable solutions to help law enforcement navigate this very challenging time. Well, wow, it's so interesting listening to you. And uh, I think I would have preferred to have had you at my house on a social event so I could capture you and have a bigger conversation with you. Uh, always welcome to come back and talk about your business as it continues to grow. I hope it does continue to grow. Uh, I think everyone's security is an important factor in living in an advanced society. Uh, but Jeff, if somebody wants to meet you, get to know you, work with you, how do they find you? The best place is to find me on LinkedIn. It's Jeff Weninger, W-E-N-N-I-N-G-E-R. You can reach out to me there. Um, I always answer um, any messages that, that I have, and um, I'd love to connect. Great, Jeff. I want to thank you for being on Radio Entrepreneurs today and remind everybody, stay tuned for more stories.